when you're getting your paper ready to proof or print your edition, um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can, you know, make marks with a ruler, cut it with an X-Acto blade, um, or you can tear your paper, which is something that printmakers really like to do um, because paper often has that deckled edge and printmakers want to replicate that on all sides. Um, so to do that, you'll need a tear bar, which is a metal straight edge with a tapered edge uh, and a large cutting mat. Now you're welcome to like use a ruler, make marks where you need to make the the tear marks, or you can just use the grid of the cutting mat. And I'm gonna use the grid of the cutting mat to uh, minimize the amount of pencil marks that I'm making on the sheet of paper. So I just turned the sheet of paper over onto its back um, because when I'm tearing, uh, that means that the deckled edge is gonna be pulling towards me. Um, and how you can often tell the front side of the back side of a sheet of paper is that the deckled edge tapers downwards towards the back. And this has to do a lot with the way that the paper is made. Um, paper is made on a screen. Usually uh, they dip the screen into the paper pulp, um, let the water drip out, and then uh, it's called couching. Cooch it onto um, blotters and then press those. So often paper will actually, the back of paper will actually have that grid mark from the screen on which it was made on the back of the paper, and that's why the deckled edge um, goes downwards. So to get the deckled edge to face downwards, I'm gonna flip my paper over. Oh, another good way that you can tell the front and back side of a paper is if your paper has a watermark, um, whichever way the watermark is right reading, that will be the front of your paper. So I flipped it over. I'm lining my edge up with the um, far line on the cutting mat. Don't start at the one on the cutting mat, otherwise you're gonna cut your paper one inch too short. Um, so make sure that it's lined up with the, where the zero would be. And I also have it lined up with one of the horizontal edges. So the first cut I'm gonna make, cause I want my paper to be 11 by 14, and I know that my long edge is 30. So I'm gonna cut or tear to 14. And I'm lining up my straight edge with the line at the 14 at the bottom and the line at the 14 on the top. I'm gonna, as best I can, leverage the middle of the tear bar so it doesn't move while I'm tearing. Grab the far edge and start to pull along the tear bar. Just like that. All right, so now I have two pieces and I wanna get the 11 out of this other side so it's 22 inches wide. Line it up with the 11. and tear. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for my last piece of paper. Um, if you're working in the studio and there's a lot of other students that are printing as well, you just wanna write your initials uh, in the bottom corner on the back of your sheet before putting it in the water bath. Um, and then once your paper's all cut and ready to go, you can come over to the water bath and place your paper in, press it down to make sure that it's completely submerged and you'll wanna soak your paper for about 15 to 20 minutes before printing. All right, so after your paper is soaking and before you apply ink to your plate, it's good to set up the press. Um, hopefully the blankets are nicely rolled for you to get started. So you unroll the blankets. Make sure the press bed is all the way out so you can lay them flat. And you know, just tidy them to make sure they're one on top of the other. It's good practice. And when we're printing and etching, we use three blankets. There's the top blanket, which is kind of rough, um, which is called the pusher. There's the middle blanket, which is soft and thick, which is called the cushion. And then there's the bottom blanket, which is called the catcher. 
So make sure that they're put on the press bed in this order. And then roll it through until the roller is about midway through the press. And now we're going to adjust our pressure. So there are these cranks on either side of the press. You're going to want to rotate these evenly. Um, this press bed is quite large, so I can't really rotate them at the same time. So, but I'm going to try to move them um, as much as possible um, one at a time. Um, and that's because you don't want to crank one side super tight before you crank the other side. Otherwise, the pressure roller will be at an angle and that could damage the press. So right now I'm just going to turn this one once and then come over here and turn the other. And I'm basically just adjusting the pressure until I start to feel some resistance, which I am starting to feel. And a good way to tell if the presser, pressure is even on both sides is that there's numbers on the top of the pressure cranks and then there's dashes below that also corresponds to numbers. So right now, this is at five over one. Sometimes you'll see, um, I'll write on the press recommended pressures um, and you can you know, immediately set the pressure to that, but I just like to show you how to set a press bed um, as if you've never used a press before. Um, so right now we're at five over one and I'm feeling some resistance, um, but I like a lot of pressure, so I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more and then I'll show you how to test it. So I'm gonna do about three over one on both sides. All right, to test my pressure, I'm going to place my etched copper plate on the press bed with a piece of newsprint over it. Roll the blankets over and crank it through. All right, once I've cleared the plate, can roll it back and then I'm looking at the impression of the plate in the newsprint. So the gauge of copper we're using is quite thin um, and newsprint is quite thin but I can see that there is the impression of that plate on the paper. So I think that this might actually be good and we'll know better when we print um, and we can adjust our pressure from there. Once your plate has been etched, you'll want to remove the hard ground before you can print your plate. So you can clean it using the parts washer, or you can apply a little bit of mineral spirits and use a dirty rag. And just rub the hard ground right off your plate. And then 
I always like to degrease my plate again um, before I start printing. Once you've degreased your plate, um, I like to put a piece of newsprint underneath the area that I'm inking um, just to try to keep my area clean, try to keep my plate clean um, so that uh, my prints will be as clean as possible. And you'll learn um, tips and tricks along the way, um, ways to keep clean for yourself. Um, I'm using black etching ink. Using etching ink is very important because it is a very dense and saturated ink because we want it to stay in our lines. I have some cut up pieces of mat board. I have phone book paper. I have some burnt plate oil just in case I need to loosen my ink up a little bit. I have a very dirty tarlatan. And then a somewhat dirty tarlatan and then a cleaner tarlatan. And I like to use um, a tarlatan, like generally tarlatan is made of starched cheesecloth, so it's very stiff and hard. Sometimes I'll actually wash my tarlatan before it gets dirty um, to soften it up a bit. And I find this helps me um, remove ink from the surface of the plate and have a little bit more control. Um, but there's lots of different ways that you can wipe a plate. Um, I recommend watching some videos of other people do it um, so that you can adapt and figure out a way of wiping that works for you. But I'm gonna show you how I wipe my plate. All right, so when we're inking, we don't want to gouge the ink. We wanna make sure that we're scraping just from the surface to conserve as much as possible. You don't need a ton of ink. A little bit of ink goes a long way. Um, and first what I'm gonna do is warm up the ink. So I'm picking it up with my palette knife, spreading it out and then picking it up again. Actually, I might put a little bit more. And right now I'm just pulling a proof, so I'm not gonna pull out that much ink. If you were going to print your whole edition, you know, you might wanna pull out more ink, but a little bit of ink goes a long way. So I'm just moving it around, loosening it up so it'll wipe off my plate a little bit easier. All right, so when you've got it loosened up, you're ready to start putting it on your plate. I'm gonna use a piece of mat board, grab some of the ink, and drag it across my plate. So even though my image is only in the center of my plate, I still want to ink up the entire plate. And this is because of something called plate tone, um, which will be this kind of like gray residue that's left behind on your plate. Um, and we want to make sure that that is dispersed evenly across the plate. If you just ink up your image, you might get this weird like cloud or border of etching ink around your image. So I'm really kind of like pressing it into the lines. Often our first proof is a little bit light because we're again like warming up the plate, getting it going, printing, and then subsequent proofs will be a little bit darker. So now I have ink on my plate. And now I'm going to take it off. And I'm using a clean side of the mat board. I'm gonna recycle my ink to use for future prints. Drag it across. All right, so when I've removed most of the ink, I'm ready to start wiping. So I'm gonna start with my dirty, more starched cheesecloth and I'm going to move all the loose ends to behind it, bunch it up so that there's a side that's flat that doesn't have any of the 
loose ends on the front. I'm gonna grab the loose ends with my hand, keep them together. So I made this kind of like a softball. Pat it down, make it nice and flat. And I'm gonna move my wrist in a circular direction. And I'm just kind of lightly wiping the plate. I'm actually like pushing the ink off the plate onto the newsprint. Rotating my plate as I go so that I'm not just wiping in one section. Because again, we want to remove the ink evenly so we can have nice, even plate tone. And I'm being careful about the lines. I don't want to over wipe the lines because I do want them to be nice and dark. All right, so. I'm getting there. I've removed a lot of the ink. Um, now I'm going to move on to the softer tarlatan that is a little bit dirtier. Again, bunch it up so that there's this nice flat part on top. And again, using that same action and I'm pressing very lightly because I don't want to take the ink out of my lines. Being very careful around the areas of the image And again, moving my plate around. And you can see the ink on the surface of your plate. There might be some areas that you need to focus in on more. Okay, that's good. And then I'm gonna move on to the cleaner tarlatan just to finish up. Again, just lightly dragging it along the plate. Okay, I don't wanna wipe any more because I don't want to wipe the actual ink out of the lines. So I'm gonna remove my gloves um, and I'm gonna finish up with a piece of foam book paper. I'm gonna rip one of these out. Um, I like to cut them into smaller portions so they're a little bit more manageable. And basically I'm just going to buff the surface of the plate with the phone book paper. Um, you can get really strategic with your wiping. You can use Q-tips. So you can see there's a little bit of material that's being removed. Again, I'm being careful around the areas of my image so I don't over wipe. And I, I want the areas around my image to be really white and that's why I'm kind of going in with this finer piece of material. And the last step is to do your edges. I grab a clean cloth, just run my finger along the edge to make sure there's no ink hiding along it. All right, so now I'm ready to print. I'm going to carefully place my etching plate in this grid that I've made. Um, and this is to help with registration so that my plate falls in the exact same spot each time and I have a nice even border. Okay, so you'll wanna blot your paper before we print on it. Um, so take it carefully out of the water bath. Um, you might wanna wash your hands before doing this so you don't get your paper dirty. Um, you'll let the paper drip dry in the bath and then place it onto the blotting towels. And basically we just wanna get rid of this shiny sheen on the surface of the paper. So you can smooth the towel out with your hands. Take the rolling pin, roll it out. All right, and then we'll bring the paper over to the press bed. Um, I like to pick my paper up like this. So again, my fingers are minimizing contact with the paper. So now I'm going to line up my 11 by 14 sheet of paper with the surrounding grid. 
lay it flat, lay my blankets down, smooth them out, and then crank the press through. All right, so on the other side, we'll move the blankets aside. It's time for the reveal. All right, and there we have it. For some reason, I have like this weird line in the middle of my paper, which I'm not sure where that came from. But besides that, you know, my lines look a little bit light, but it was my first time proofing. Um, again, I proofed on this, my good paper. Um, you're probably going to want to just proof on a piece of newsprint or some scrap paper that you find in the drawer before moving to your good paper. Um, but for the most part, this looks good to me besides that line. All right, so when you start printing your edition, you're going to want to uh, flatten your proofs and prints as you go. Um, if you dry them on the drying racks, because they're still damp, they might start to crinkle and buckle, and we don't want that. We want our prints to dry nice and flat. Um, so we'll take this heavy piece off of the drying board um, and you're going to want to make a sandwich of um, newsprint and blotters so I've already got a blotter underneath piece of newsprint here I'll lay my print down um, if I was continuing to print the edition I would go back into the studio ink my plate up again rub it through the press um, and keep going until my edition is done, bring the print here, um, and so on and so forth. When you finish printing your edition, then you can close up the blotters, place the newsprint piece on top, blotter on top, and then heavy piece of wood back on top and then you're ready to clean up. So when you've finished your edition, um, and you're ready to clean, you'll want to clean your plate first. So in this case, I just have a line etch. Um, I'm going to put Aquatint on this plate, um, so I am going to want to clean it up at this point. Then I'm going to take a little bit of mineral spirits, dirty rag, and try to clean up all the, that ink from the lines. Clean up the back of the plate. Set it aside once it's clean. And then, and then if you still have a lot of ink left, you can scoop it up with your palette knife, scrape it into the container, then make sure you smooth it out as best you can so that it doesn't just dry on the side. I'm gonna use this little razor blade to clean up my little ink pile. Use it to clean up my palette knife. And then at this point, you could use mineral spirits again, but I like to use vegetable oil. Oops. 
dirty rag. And the vegetable oil, because the ink is oil-based, it loosens it up. I can use it on my palette knives as well. And on my laser blade. And then once I clean things up with vegetable oil, I want to degrease. with denatured alcohol. So that spot on the table using a cleaner rag. Clean up my palette knives. Remembering to do the edges because ink tends to hide there and the handle. And same with the palette knife. And then we can still use these. They're not horribly dirty yet, so we'll put them in the reusable rag pile. Fold this up. Throw it away. Put the tarlatan away to be reused. And I'm ready to um, apply Aquatint now.